The focus of this presentation is to help farmers and entrepreneurs learn more about personal hygiene and sanitary food handling for food manufacturing. The main topics of the presentation will include discussions about contamination of foods, good manufacturing practices, and best practices for food manufacturing. We will begin by discussing contamination of foods, including where in the food production chain contamination can occur. We will also discuss a few examples. Contamination of foods can occur at any stage of the food production chain. The food production chain involves the production, processing, distribution, and preparation of food for commercial use. The safety of the food must be ensured during all stages of the food production chain. Production means growing the plants we harvest or raising the animals we use for food. Food typically comes from domesticated animals and plants, and most production occurs on farms or ranches. Other foods may be caught or harvested from the wild, like fish, mushrooms, and game. Some examples of contamination in the production stage of the food production chain include If a hen's reproductive organs are infected, the yolk of an egg may be contaminated in the hen before it is even laid. If fields are sprayed with contaminated water for irrigation, fruits and vegetables can be contaminated before harvest. Fish in some tropical reefs may acquire a toxin from the smaller sea creatures they eat. The next stage of the food production chain is processing, which means changing plants or animals into what we recognize and buy as food. Processing means different things for different kinds of foods. Processing produce may be as simple as washing and sorting, or it may involve trimming, slicing, or shredding. Milk is usually processed by pasteurizing. Milk may also be made into cheese. Nuts may be roasted, chopped, or ground like peanut butter. And for animals, the first step of processing is slaughter. Meat and poultry may be cut into pieces, ground, smoked, cooked, frozen, or combined with other ingredients. Several examples of contamination that can occur during processing include if contaminated water or ice is used to wash, pack, or chill fruits or vegetables, the contamination can spread to the produce. During the slaughter process, germs on an animal's hide that came from the intestines can get into the final meat product. If germs contaminate surfaces used for food processing, such as processing lines or storage bins, germs can spread to foods that touch those surfaces. Distribution means getting food from the farm or processing plant to the consumer or food service facility. This process may include transporting foods just once, as happens when food is shipped from a farm to a local farmer's market, or it may involve many stages. Examples of contamination that can occur during distribution include if refrigerated food is left on a loading dock for a long time in warm weather, it could reach temperatures that allow bacteria to grow. Fresh produce can be contaminated if it is loaded into a truck that was not cleaned after transporting animals or animal products. The final stage of the food production chain is preparation, which means getting the food ready to eat. Preparation also ranges in complexity. It may involve following a complex recipe with many ingredients. It could be as simple as just heating and serving on a plate, or even just opening a package and eating the food directly. Some examples of contamination that can occur during preparation include if a food worker stays on the job while sick and does not wash his or her hands carefully after using the restroom, the food worker can spread germs by touching food. If a cook uses a cutting board or knife to cut raw chicken and then uses the same knife or cutting board without washing it to slice tomatoes for a salad, the tomatoes can be contaminated by germs from the chicken. Contamination can occur in a refrigerator if uncooked meat juices get on items that will be eaten raw. As you have seen in the previous slides, there are many opportunities for food contamination to occur. There are three main types of food contamination, physical, chemical, and biological. Physical contamination refers to food that has been contaminated by a foreign object at some stage of the production process. These objects have the ability to injure someone and can also potentially carry harmful biological contaminants, which then cause illness. An additional consequence of physical contamination is the upset caused to the person who finds the object. Things like bandages, fingernails, and pieces of cooking equipment are the last thing customers would like to find in their meals. Chemical contamination refers to food that has been contaminated by some type of chemical substance. Because chemicals are frequently used when cleaning in the kitchen, they can easily contaminate food. 
chemicals must be properly labeled and stored separately from foodstuff to minimize the risk of contamination. There are also chemicals that occur naturally in foods, like toxins in some fish. In some cases, minimal chemical contamination might not actually lead to illness. However, the food handler must always be aware of the presence of chemicals in food and take all reasonable precautions to make sure that chemical contamination doesn't happen. Biological contamination refers to food that's contaminated by substances produced by living creatures, such as humans, rodents, pests, or microorganisms. This includes bacterial, viral, or parasitic contamination that's transferred through saliva, pest droppings, blood, or fecal matter. Bacterial contamination is thought to be the most common cause of food poisoning worldwide, and the best way to protect against it occurring is by maintaining the best food safety practices. There are many potential causes of food contamination that can occur during the food production chain, including cross-contamination as safe foods come into contact with contaminated foods, allowing foods to reach unsafe temperatures for long periods of time, food production chain workers that follow poor personal hygiene practices, and improper cleaning and sanitation throughout the food production chain. It is critical to note that you can't see, smell, or taste harmful bacteria that may cause illness. In every step of food preparation, follow these steps to keep food safe. These steps are essential to preventing foodborne illness. Step 1. Clean. Wash hands and surfaces often. Step 2. Separate. Don't cross-contaminate foods. Step 3. Cook. Make sure food is cooked to the right temperature. Step 4. Chill. Refrigerate promptly. Good manufacturing practices, or GMPs, are used in food manufacturing facilities to ensure that food products are high in quality and to reduce chances of food safety issues. Defined more formally, GMPs are practices required to conform to the guidelines recommended by agencies that control the authorization and licensing of the manufacture and sale of food and beverages, cosmetics, pharmaceutical products, dietary supplements, and medical devices. These guidelines provide the minimum requirements that manufacturers must follow to make sure products are consistently high quality from batch to batch. GMPs help prevent harm from occurring to a product's end user, typically the consumer. They ensure that products are free from contamination, that products are consistent, that manufacturing has been well documented, that personnel are well trained, and that the product has been checked for quality. Employers are responsible for providing training in food handling and personal hygiene, conducting regular inspections of employees' hygiene and hygienic work habits. Any violations of related GMPs should be handled as disciplinary violations. Employers should also provide incentives for superior hygiene. And employers must maintain proper sanitary facilities and supplies, like soap, disinfectant, work sinks, hairnets, etc. There are many federal and state government regulations designed to prevent foodborne illness, but the food manufacturing industry must also continuously improve oversight and training and provide necessary funds to facilitate change in food manufacturing practices. Best manufacturing practices do not have to be complicated, but they must encompass the basic principles of food safety. Food handlers are a frequent cause of food contamination, either directly by contaminating the food they are handling or by contaminating other people. Foods may be contaminated from employees with foodborne illness or viruses or colds. Food handlers may contaminate food if they have open wounds or by wearing dirty clothing, shoes, jewelry, or watches. Hair is another way that food can be contaminated, among other sources that are part of our bodies. These are several best practices that need to be enforced during food manufacturing. These will be discussed in the following slides. Although hand washing is one of the most critical factors in reducing bacterial and viral contamination, many food handlers do not follow proper hand washing procedure. Food handlers should be physically shown how to wash their hands properly as part of their initial training. Proper hand washing should be company policy, as improper hand washing is a critical or priority food safety violation from the health department. 80% of communicable diseases are transferred by touch. Touching foods with contaminated hands spreads foodborne illness. Despite this risk of contaminating foods by touch, only 20% of people wash their hands before preparing food. 
Fewer than 75% of women and 50% of men wash their hands after going to the restroom. Hand washing and hand hygiene initiatives greatly reduce the number of absences and sick leaves and minimize lost productivity. Most bacteria on our hands are on the fingertips and under the nails. Most people wash the palms of their hands and miss everything else. The bacteria count is highest on the dominant hand, yet right-handed people wash their left hand more thoroughly than their right hand, and vice versa. After hand washing, 20% of people dry their hands. Reusable cloth towels harbor millions of bacteria, so disposable paper towels are the most sanitary means of drying hands. Follow these steps for proper hand washing. Step 1. Wet hands and arms with running water that is at least 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. Step 2. Apply soap and build up a good lather. Step 3. Scrub hands and arms vigorously for 20 seconds. It is critical to wash your hands for the recommended duration. Every 15 seconds spent washing hands, 10 times more bacteria are removed. Step 4. Rinse hands and arms thoroughly. Step 5. After rinsing, be sure to only use single-use paper towels or hand dryers to dry. Here are some visual examples of when you should wash your hands or change your gloves. After using the restroom. After handling raw meat, dirty dishes, garbage, or cash or other forms of payment. After using cleaning supplies or other chemicals. After touching your face or any part of your body. After coughing or sneezing. After touching other surfaces that have not been sanitized and before and after eating. Although it's not shown as an example, you should also wash your hands after using your phone. There are a number of barriers to proper hand washing. Employees being pressed for time, inadequate hand washing facilities and or supplies like soap and disposable paper towels, lack of managerial support for proper hand washing and lack of accountability, a lack of training for proper hand washing, and wearing gloves while washing hands. Employers should address these barriers to improve employees' adherence to hand-washing best practices. The next best practice is to implement an employee illness policy. Sick employees must not be involved in processing food. Employees that are ill or have open wounds may transmit bacteria and viruses to others via the food. Always tell the facility manager if you feel ill or if you have open wounds or cuts. Employees should be excluded from work if they are exhibiting symptoms of sore throat with fever, vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice. Understanding the big five pathogens and the potential for contamination should be a priority not only for management but for employees as well. These pathogens, including norovirus, hepatitis A virus, salmonella typhi, bacteria of the Shigella species, and Shiga toxin-producing E. coli, often include symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea. Employees diagnosed with infection by these big five pathogens should not be handling food and must be cleared medically by a physician before returning to work. If an employee has an open wound, the wound needs to be covered as follows. Wounds on the hand or wrist should be given an impermeable cover, like a bandage, along with a single-use glove. If a finger has an injury, a finger cot can be used to cover the finger, along with a single-use glove for added protection. Wounds on the arm should be given an impermeable cover, such as a bandage. Wounds on other parts of the body should be covered with a dry, tight-fitting bandage. Personal hygiene is a critical best practice for ensuring food safety during food processing. Personal hygiene has a variety of protocols when it comes to food safety and is not limited to hand washing and glove use. Employees who handle food must commit to showering or bathing daily and keeping their fingernails clean and trimmed. They must wear clean uniforms or garments that are in good repair. That means clothes that are torn or soiled should not be worn. Clothing must also cover the lower body, so no shorts or skirts should be worn either. Shirts with pockets should also be avoided because items can fall out of the pockets into the food. Proper footwear must be worn as well, meaning no open-toed shoes, high heel shoes, canvas shoes, or tennis shoes. Employees processing food when sick, unhygienic food handlers, personal food, beverages, or other personal items in the food preparation area, lack of hair restraints, and wearing of soiled clothing are all problems when it comes to food safety. 
It is therefore critical for employers to develop programs for managing personal hygiene. This should include creating and enforcing hygiene policies, training and retraining employees in best practices for personal hygiene, ensuring that leadership models the correct behavior, supervising food safety practices, and revising policies when laws or science change. It is important to note that false fingernails and fingernail polish can both contaminate food. Food handlers should keep their fingernails short and clean to prevent food contamination. When your hands touch other parts of your body, they can become contaminated with germs that can then be spread to food. Behaviors that should be avoided while handling food include scratching the scalp or running fingers through hair, touching the nose, rubbing an ear, touching a pimple or sore, touching your dirty uniform, coughing or sneezing into the hand, spitting. In addition, touching your glasses or hat should be avoided. Hair and beard net policies should require hair restraints in all food preparation areas. Hair restraints should cover bangs and long ponytails. Beard nets are required for facial hair that is greater than one quarter inch long. Hats should be stored properly, not above food or prep surfaces. Since hair is the number one physical hazard in food, proper precautions should be taken. Hair should not be a surprise ingredient in a customer's meal. Depending on where your food business is located, there may be a legal requirement prohibiting the wearing of any jewelry in a food preparation area. Jewelry can harbor bacteria that may be transferred to food. Jewelry is also a potential physical hazard if lost in the food product. The best practice is to prohibit wearing of jewelry in food processing facilities, with the exception of a single plain wedding band without gemstones and only if that wedding band is covered by tape or a glove. So, no earrings, necklaces, rings, watches, or bracelets should be worn during food production. Proper disposable glove usage is also necessary to ensure food safety. Gloves are a secondary barrier to aid in reducing bacteria and viruses that could be transmitted from hands to food. Gloves are like skin, though, and may become contaminated, Gloves should be changed any time they become contaminated or torn. Hands should be properly washed when gloves are changed. Food handlers often forget the hand-washing step and don't realize that they may have recontaminated their fresh gloves in the process of changing out the old gloves. A good basic example is when food processing workers handle raw animal proteins such as poultry and then switch to a task involving a ready-to-eat food such as a sandwich. Used gloves need to be discarded properly as well and not end up as a potential physical contaminant. Providing the right kind of glove for any food processing situation and ensuring employees have access to gloves that fit well encourages proper glove usage. Employers should provide gloves that are NSF approved, disposable, in multiple sizes, and are appropriate for latex sensitivity. NSF certification assures suppliers, retailers, regulators, and consumers that an independent organization has reviewed a product's manufacturing process and determined that the product complies with specific standards for safety, quality, sustainability, or performance. Gloves are only an effective barrier to food contamination if they are used according to best practices. When putting on gloves, employees should choose the correct size for a proper fit and should hold the edge when pulling the gloves onto their hands. Once the gloves are on their hands, employees should check for rips and tears. If the gloves have any holes, they must be changed. Employees should not blow into gloves or roll up the edges. Gloves should be changed after touching your body, using the restroom, eating or drinking, handling dirty equipment or utensils, handling raw food, or after any activity that may contaminate gloves. Follow these steps to safely remove single-use gloves. Take hold of the outside of the first glove near the wrist. Peel the first glove downwards, away from the wrist, turning the glove inside out as you peel. Pull the first glove all the way downwards until it is removed from the hand. This inside-out used glove should be held with the gloved hand to avoid contaminating the ungloved hand. Slide a finger of your ungloved hand under the wrist of the second glove. Do not touch the outer surface of the second glove. As with the first glove, peel downwards away from the wrist, turning the glove inside out. 
Pull the glove down all the way until the second glove is removed and completely inside out. The second inside out glove should contain the first inside out glove. Employees should take care to not touch the outside of the gloves with their ungloved hands to avoid contaminating their hands. Eating and drinking should not be permitted in food processing areas. Food items, including candy and chewing gum, and personal drinks must be prohibited from food processing areas. The use of any tobacco products is also prohibited in the food processing facility. Personal food items should be kept in specially designated areas and removed at the end of each day. Personal items like makeup, cell phones, and radios should be secured and stored away from the food processing area. Cell phones are not sanitary. A person's cell phone goes everywhere with him or her, including restrooms and dining areas. Additionally, cell phones are generally stored in back pants, pockets, or purses, which are not sanitary locations. Cell phones are, therefore, exposed to everything. There is no way to properly sanitize a cell phone, so it should never go into the food production facility. The recommendations and practices described in this presentation do not account for all food handling circumstances. This presentation is only meant to introduce the importance of personal hygiene and sanitary food handling during food manufacturing. Please refer to local, state, and federal laws for requirements in your area. Additional guidance can be obtained from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. 